Hello, today we're going to review a recently published article titled Building a Fraud Profile with Device ID Plus. This is a multi-part series of articles and each one builds upon the previous examples. For part one, I'd like to quickly introduce you to the Device ID service and jump into the basics of building a fraud profile. Today we're going to cover how Device ID Plus can be used to combat web application fraud and abuse. Device ID Plus is a simple JavaScript tag that can be placed on any website and it can be used across the entire application. For today, we're going to talk about specific cases around login uh, or contact us forms or anywhere a, an attacker can input uh, malicious data or try to take over an account. Device identifiers have been around for a long time. Mostly, they have been used to target advertising towards web users. Some cybersecurity solutions also offer device identifiers, but the main weakness across all of them is that users can get rid of their cookies. They can clear their cache. They can go into, into incognito mode. They can do multiple things, uh, use an ad blocker. And all of these things represent about 30% of the traffic for those sites. So those device identifiers may be effective in some cases, but there's a, there's a massive gap that needs to be filled and the Device ID Plus service does that. The Device ID Plus service leverages JavaScript to create a unique tamper-proof identifier that can be tracked across the 30% churn that we just talked about. So um, if a user goes into incognito mode, Device ID will still produce the same identifier um, if they clear their cache, same identifier. And it does this through being able to detect what is going on in the browser, what APIs are used. It's all non-PII signal collection. And F5 and Shape have developed this technology over the past six or seven years. And now it's available in the device ID service uh, for free. The example application that we're going to look at uses reCAPTCHA already. So we're trying to simulate an environment where reCAPTCHA or some other scoring system is being used to prevent unwanted logins and malicious user behavior. As you follow along with part one on how to build a fraud profile with device ID, you'll get down to the part where it talks about the demo application. That's what I'm gonna review with you now. You can run this application directly by just going to the URL deviceid.dev slash v3 or you can spin it up on your local machine with a simple Docker container by running this command uh, and visiting localhost slash v3. So we're gonna go straight to the live site here. And this is an example application, like I said, around 128 lines of code, nothing advanced. It's just to replicate a login where reCAPTCHA is being used. So if a user tries to log in, you're gonna to come to the next screen. And here you're gonna see the details behind the device ID token that was, that was generated for your session. The token in blue, the, the long string in blue here, is uh, the device ID residue value. This is the unique identifier created and stored as a cookie. You know how we talked about cookie churn earlier. This will actually be wiped out and you will get a new one if you clear your cookies or visit the site with an ad blocker or in incognito mode. However, there's also this other token called a device ID attribute value. This is the one that leverages the signals that we just reviewed in the browser. It goes in and it analyzes all of the capabilities of the browser that's running this page and it issues that to the user as well. So you have two identifiers to, to use in your analysis and this is the beginning of what we call a fraud profile where a user exists under that user. There is a device ID uh, residue value. Here we have the score, the reCAPTCHA score, a timestamp of when the transaction happened, and the device ID attribute value for further analysis. So if we look at a user and they have multiple device IDs supplied, but the same device ID attribute, we'll know that they're using incognito mode or clearing their cache or doing something else. So let's, let's take a look at that live. So if we go back and we try to log in again, but this time 
with an incognito browser. We're going to see that, yes, even though we're using the same Chrome web browser as before, we get a different device ID on this login request. And that's because I'm now in incognito mode replicating you know, uh, the clearing of a session. Also, we see that my score is a bit different. I have a 0.3 score. That means that Google thinks I'm a bot or a malicious user of some kind. And as you just witnessed, all I did was go to incognito mode. So this just shows exactly how an existing scoring system can skew results for good users. Because I'm a good user, I just wanna go in, buy something, and leave. But here we can see that the device ID attribute value remains the same. So this gives us a whole new dimension in managing traffic, managing our good users, managing our fraudsters, and being able to come up with a very advanced way to detect good and bad behavior. So now that you have a basic idea of what device ID can do, uh, I recommend that you follow along in the article, go through the demo application, understand what, uh, what the fraud profile is trying to do. It's pretty simple. Um, also, you'll get details about how the device identifiers work uh, that are supplied by the device ID service. And next steps are we'll take this data from the demo application and we'll look at it and analyze it and create some nice fraud analytics based on device ID plus.